Years back, when I was a layperson, I was involved in a psychology experiment. They had a bucket of ice water. They told me to put my hand in the water and to think of the coldness of the hand was the right hand going over to the left hand and the warmth of the left hand going into the right hand to see how long I could keep my hand in the, in the bucket. I had it there for a good ten minutes when they finally told me I could stop because I was breaking the curve. It turned out that the experiment had divided people into three groups. The first group was told simply to put the hand in the bucket and when they couldn't stand it any longer to pull it out. The second group was told to put their hand in the bucket of water and to try to keep it there as long as possible. And the third group was the one that was given the technique for dealing with uh, the coldness of the water. And the results, of course, were that the third group was able to keep its hand in the water much longer than the other two groups. Now, I'd been meditating prior to that for at least a year, which was why I was able to keep my hand in for so long. I was good at thinking of energies in one part of the body going to another part of the body. But the lesson applies across the board, that if you're given a technique for dealing with pain, for dealing with difficult situations, for dealing with emotional or physical pain, you can handle it a lot more easily than if you're not given a technique. If you feel that you have something that you can use to defend yourself from the pain, or even better, if you feel that you can take a more active or proactive approach toward it so that you're not simply on the receiving end, that you're actually shaping the experience, you can handle things a lot more easily. You feel less threatened by them. This is one of the things we're doing as we're working with the breath and the body. We're learning how to fabricate the breath energy in such a way that we can create a sense of well-being in spite of other situations around us, in spite of things, other things going on in the mind. So it's important that you learn how to protect this space you create here, because it's so easily overrun, especially when you're first working on this skill. Because this is your safe place. The mind needs a safe place. Not only a safe place, but also a range of weapons or tools, skills that you can use to deal with situations as they arise, so that you're not afraid of them. Especially when you're dealing with emotional pain. One of the least helpful pieces of advice, advice I hear, and I keep on hearing it, when people are told simply to sit with the pain sit with their difficult emotions, and that's it. They're not given any, any help as to, well, how do you not get overwhelmed by the emotion? How do you not end up trying to run away from it? And remember, the Buddha taught three types of fabrication. The first is the breath. Work with the breath and the body. So even though there may be difficult emotions going on in the mind, you're here with a sense of well-being, physically at least, and the difficult emotions are not getting into the body through the breath. The breath forms a cocoon around the body. And when you're coming from that sense of well-being, then you can exercise those other forms of fabrication. You can ask yourself questions about what's going on here. The Buddha has you ask questions about two types of phenomena. One right away is ask questions about where is the stress here and what's causing it. And try to step back and just ask those questions. The whole point here is that you're not simply on the receiving end, that you're taking a more proactive approach. And John Mahabua talks about dealing with physical pain by asking different questions about it. And our normal reaction to physical pain is we want it to go away or we go away from it. But his approach was once the mind had a certain foundation and concentration, you start probing, asking questions about it. Where is the sharpest point of the pain right now? What shape does the pain have? What color does the pain have? Where is it? Is it the same thing as the part of the body that's pained, or is it something else? After all, pain is not part of the 
aggregate of form, it's an aggregate of feeling. The body is in the aggregate of form. So there must be something different about the pain and the body. What is the difference? And as he noted many times, and the questions you asked today might get a good result today, but then the same questions might not get the same good result tomorrow. So you've got to come up with new questions, which means that the mind has to be constantly on the offensive. And the fact that you're on the offensive like this, this keeps you from being a stationary target for the pain. The same principle applies with the mind. When some emotions are painful, you can ask yourself, well, what's the assumption behind this emotion? Where do you feel it? When does it come? When does it go? Start asking questions about it. And if you're coming from a place of well-being in the breath, it's a lot easier to ask those questions. And in asking the questions, you're setting yourself apart from the pain so that you can observe it clearly. Ultimately, the Buddha has you turn those questions on your sources of comfort as well. Whatever attitudes you may tend to fall back on, they give you a sense of well-being. There are times when you have to question them, because maybe you're hiding something from yourself behind them. That kind of questioning can feel threatening unless you've got that sense in the body, in the breath. A sense of ease, fullness that you can fall back on. In other words, you know that even if a particular assumption you had that was comforting, but you realize it's not all that reliable, is questioned, you're still going to have a source of nourishment, a source of well being inside. So you feel more confident about questioning it. So, this foundation we're developing here with the breath is something that's really worth protecting. It's our defense. It's our safe space from which we can start asking the questions that will free us from a lot of our self-inflicted pains. So you're not sitting here defenseless. You've got your tools. So protect them. Look after them. And then use them. But it's, because it's only in developing the concentration and the discernment that comes from learning how to ask the right questions about where there's pain in the body, where there's pain in the mind, what's causing it, what can be done to let it go. It's only through those questions that you're going to find release, the discernment that takes you to release. The discernment isn't just copying what you've heard in the books. It comes from probing and questioning. And the concentration is what gives you the foundation that allows you to probe without fear.